it all played out, Pastor King. And so I call him Pastor King, so that's a whole other story. But so it all played out, and then now I'm in his space, and I had to had the privilege of meeting his beautiful mother, who actually just loved me, and that was just a whole other dope experience. And so, but from that, then came Manifest University, came the online community, and then I came like the person who just walked around loving people, because that's what I do. And so, um... Yeah, so he wrote this book, and so from this audacity, just things started happening, but people started believing. People saw what I was unwilling to see or couldn't see in myself because life, right? That four-letter word, that dimmed me from even seeing me, but then you still shine. That's the thing. You shine and bright either way, whether you see it or not, because other people can see. And so here on my ugliest days, and always mostly on the ugliest days that I thought, people would be like, hi, you, you look so wonderful, and, you, and they didn't even know that on the inside I felt like I was dying. But other people could absolutely still see your light, and so he was one of the people who could see my light. Mom described it as, who decided to turn the thing on the jack and box, on the jack and box? And so now she, she was like, now that I'm out and there's no putting me back in because I will not go back in because I got audacity and I look good in this blue yeah. lipstick. Yeah. Yeah. Introducing to some and all Brian Hipper. That was an amazing introduction. Thank you so much. Uh, my experience with Sierra Clark, who I call Deacon Clark, she calls me Pastor King. If I if what I've created was a was a church, she would definitely be the deacon. So I call her Deacon Clark. But my experience, my life experience with her thus far has shown me that when you pull someone or motivate someone to come out of that that jack in the box, as as she she called it, or I say activate someone to shine their light, you have no clue just how bright their light is. And she's been an absolute uh, amazing testament of that because. Although I've seen this wonderful light in her, who knew that she would just so fast turn around and activate not only herself, but so many other people. And that she would turn around and not only be a light, but be a lighter of lights. And, and, uh, and so I honor you so much and I'm so grateful for, the, for what you show me in our, in our life experience. Um, she mentioned being, uh, you know, me meeting my mother when she met my mother, my mother was in her, I say in the last two years of, of her life, she passed away almost two years ago um, from liver cancer. And so, you know, we're here, blue lips don't care. We're talking about, we're having those uncomfortable conversations of, you know, about death. I woke up this morning, it was like, okay, we gotta talk about death today. Um, I'm, I'm excited by the fact that my life experience has given me the ability to change the way that my daughters will understand and relate to death because of what I've been able to witness and you know and, and, and go through. And there was many questions that hopefully if I do my job correctly, they won't have because they'll have the understanding. Um, so thank you again for loving my mother and loving on my mother the way the way that you did. Um, Losing, I, I've experienced a lot of uh, death in my life growing up, but obviously nothing, even knowing that she was dying, even being her caretaker for years, and knowing that we're, we're getting closer day by day to, to her final days, nothing, nothing could prepare for this journey. And so I would just want to tell you what I've learned so far on this journey, and I pray that it helps you as you as we go through life, because death is such a big part of life. It's one of the most certain parts of life, yet we're so vastly unprepared for it. Um, no one told me how big of a part our egos play in the way that we deal with death, in the way that we mourn, in the way that we often suffer. Sidebar, anytime that you find yourself suffering from anything, that's a clear indication that there's something different that you can be doing in that situation to get a different result. Again, if you're suffering from it, meaning it's ongoing, it's continuous, it's repetitive, there's something different that you can be doing to provide a different result. Don't forget that. So I found myself suffering, and I was suffering from an identity that I created, being her caretaker, being her well, I didn't create the identity of being her son, but 
uh, being her caretaker led to this identity of being her savior. I felt within me that there was something that I could do that would save her. And almost, um, almost a year before her death, or I mean, so almost two months before her death, rather, a great friend of, of, of ours named Al Tutson came to me and was like, you know, that identity is going to hurt you even more than it already is right now when, when it's shattered. When, when what's going to happen happens and that identity is going to shatter, you're not going to suffer from the event. You're going to suffer from this identity. And, and, and desperate to not be in that place, I heeded to that warning and, and began to really look at this, this world around myself that I created around being this identity of, of her savior. And, and most of us, as I've looked over the crowds of people who are losing family members or losing people that they care about, many of us are suffering from the identities that we created whether it was you thought you could save them or whether it was that you just thought you had more time. More often than not, or again, we're suffering from the ideas and the identities versus the event. So after let, letting go of, of that identity of being her, uh, her savior and her passing, I had to realize, I had to figure out what life now meant for me outside of the birth identity of her son because as her son I had spent the last almost seven years of my life devoted to saving this woman's life and preserving this woman's life as long as I could so much about the way that I thought the things that I did my goals everything surrounded that and I found myself in a place where many people who I get to um, counsel and mentor now um, ha have told me that they were at where they would say I'm learning myself all over again. I'm discovering myself and my, and my, and my purpose. And, and, and I found myself in that space where I said, well, if I'm not that, it's time for me to figure out what I am. And that's where rediscovery comes in. That's where uh, love of, of self uh, comes in. I love of self. Uh, first, uh, proper identification of self leads to a proper love of self. A proper love of self will lead to a um, respect of self. And that respect of self is what cues the discipline, the self-discipline to actually walk out those things that would lead you to a, a greater existence. I'm gonna go back to what, what I mentioned about our identity being what we suffer from. Because not only is that present, in the scenario of death, but that's present in every day of our lives. There's many of us walking around suffering, not having the results that we desire, not ha not feeling the way that we desire because we're a lot behind an identity and an idea of who we are or what we are and how we must be. So whether we're referring to life or referring to death, it's absolutely important that you find the congruency with truth. Not your truth, not his truth, not her truth. We all don't have our own separate versions of truth. People like to say that, and that's normally said in a defensible way so that you can't challenge whatever it is that they're saying. They're saying, this is my truth. You don't have a truth. There is truth, and there is impersonations of it. And then there's lies. Congruency with truth is that we all have the ability to walk this planet being healed, happy, and whole. We all have the ability to love on those around us, regardless of their conditions. We all have the ability to add value in every room that we walk into. And if you will do that for yourself, if you will do that for the every lives that you touch, you will continue to do something that death cannot separate. You will, you will, you know, my, my mother loved Michael Jackson's song, Rock With You. It's one of the first songs I remember it's the first songs I was singing to my daughters that they were in their, their mother's stomachs. It's the first song they wound up falling asleep to. It's our favorite song, Rock With You. And the bridge of Rock With You, Michael Jackson says, uh, love survives. I've heard that song my whole life, like I said. It wasn't until my mom passed away that those words leaked out that song for me. He know that love survives, so we can rock 
Sue, go forever long. You know what I'm saying? Love survives. So many things pass away. So many things will expire, but love survives. So if we can go through our lives being love, because love is an action word. Love is not a feeling, it's an emotion, it's an, it's an action word. Matter of fact, we can stop saying, I love you, and we should look at people and say, you show me what love is. You show me the expression of what lives. You are an example of what love is. We shouldn't say, I hate you. You should say, you show me where my fears are. <laughs> being honest and being in congruency with life allows you to maneuver through death in a different way. A lot of people have questions. I've, I've seen people, um, a woman, I know a woman who lost a child many, many years ago. And, and, and to this woman, that death is just as real now as it was 20 years ago when she lost that child. And she's, she'll argue with doctors, pastors, anyone that would try to tell her a purpose behind why this happened. And because, so she can feel, she doesn't realize it, I'm sure, but feel victimized in it. And that's the place that she's been used to being. And one day we were having a conversation and she told me how she was going through something. And rather than taking her life, it was the thought that if she took her life based off of her religious belief, she wouldn't go to heaven and she wouldn't see that daughter that passed away 20 some years ago. And I said, all the years that I've known you, you've been acting like that scenario, that situation didn't have a purpose, but you just told me just right now that that unfortunate death of your, of your infant is a reason why you haven't taken your life here right now to be the mother that you are for your other children like so that seems like a great purpose let's give your angel her glory now that woman had an option she can either see the god in this situation or she can you know disregard it but we all have that option we all have the option to see the glory in the setup versus what we're experiencing i heard one time someone say focus on the slip and not the fall we all focus on the fall, but if you focus on the slip, that's what caused it. So that you don't have to repeat that, that cycle. Because many of us are going through cycles, repeating the same emotions, repeating the same thoughts, and repeating the same actions and still not getting what it is that we want. What we want for everyone that's here today is to leave stronger than you came and with a light that you can shine on other people. Because we know one thing for sure is that death is going to continue, that we're going to continue to lose people that we love. But what we should remember is that love survives. And that if we continue to be love and light and lessons to those who are around us, that we will create and build something that not even death can separate us from. That's what I wanted to share with y'all this morning, this afternoon rather. Um, and thank you for your time. Thank you for hearing me out. Does anyone have any, any questions? You got anything else you want me to okay, so talk about? Tell us about, about uh, manif uh, manifesting you 111 keys to unlocking your divinity. Okay, would you mind handing me one of the books? Sure. So this is my first book. I am a uh, seven-time author. Officially, I'll be an eight-time author uh, in two weeks when I release my, my, my next book. But this was my very first one. It's called Manifesting You. It's 111 keys to unlocking your divinity. Um, it's currently in 155 countries that I'm aware of and changing a whole lot of people's lives. Um, all of my books are, are uh, themed with 111 something. So um, you'll see the other ones on the table. All of There's 111 keys of ageless wisdom. There's 111 keys to walking in your infinity. But this one is a lot of unlearning and relearning. You know, I don't know, know where, what environments uh, you, you came from, but mine's taught me a lot of backwards things. Mine's had me doing a, believing and moving in a lot of ways that aren't, um, again, congruent, that aren't in alignment with creating greater opportunities. A lot of the things that I learned through life taught me how to move from places of lack. 
places of fear, not even realizing that this is what I'm doing. You know, we make a whole lot of decisions based off of fear. Fear of judgment, fear of failure, fear of lack, all these, all these different things. And any time that you're moving off of fear, you can only produce more things for you to fear. Anytime that you're moving from lack, you can only produce more opportunities of lack. And so this is uh, a lot about unlearning and relearning from, from, your, from your mentality to, uh, to the way that you speak, your words, to their connections. There's a whole chapter in this book called Assets and Allies, and that's all about your relationships. Um, there's affirmations in this, in this book. My favorite one that we actually call the uh, Manifest University Pledge of Allegiance. It's a group of like seven or eight affirmations, and I'm going to read them to you. And I would love it if you actually would repeat after me. I am letting go, I am letting go of every part of me, of every part of me that, is not contributing that is not contributing to my elevation. To my elevation. I, am I am moving forward, moving forward with, dignity, with dignity, grace, grace and, patience. and patience. I am welcoming, I am welcoming this, new chapter, this new chapter with the highest level the of, gratitude and humility. of gratitude and humility. My spirit rises, My spirit rises to, match the new to match the new and magical beginnings, and magical beginnings that, await that await me. Low vibrating energies, Low vibrating energies can't, reach can't reach me at this height. I love that part. My vision is locked. And focused, and focused on the multiple blessings, the multiple blessings that, are coming my way. that are coming my way. And then it just feel like you just took a shower, uh, you know, just got refreshed, like you just released something that didn't need to be there and just accepted something that should be there. This book isn't it's not full of affirmations, but it's full of words that will have that, that same effect. Um, from this book, I created a course that expand and expounded on all the principles that's in this book. And one day, I created a, a chat room for all the people who had purchased the course in case they wanted to ask any questions. And it instantly turned into a community. It was about 30 women, maybe one or two men, and uh, women do what women do, and they turned this thing into, they made this thing a home. It's, a, it's just a virtual space, but it turned into a, a family of uh, uh, people who were all dedicated to elevating their frequency and and creating a better reality. This uh, this group, this community, this home ultimately got turned it into a three tier subscription service, so that people could have access to this community. Um, know your worth. Add tax plus interest. We'll give you that as as well. Because uh, once you, when you see that you are offering something of value, the world will always lowball you. You have to be the one that sets that price, whatever it is, whatever it is. And we're not here about the profit. We're here for the purpose. But the purpose does require profit for us to do some of the things that you know that that we want to do. So it's important to not lowball yourself. The rest of the world is going to do that. You don't need to be doing that. Um, so I created this. This community, in, uh, two and a half years ago, is, is growing, is thriving. Um, Deacon Clark is, is like, she, like she said, is one of the, the pinnacles of it. We love to hear from her, and, and I just love the way that she shines her light in this community. Um, and from this space, it's, it's led to me creating, like I said, many more books. I have uh, the first children's book that I was able to create last year with my uh, seven-year-old, then six-year-old, Samara Hippolyte. And she has her book. Samara, would you bring me one of your books, please? So I'll give Samara a hand as she comes up. Come here, sit right here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your book, because your book is really important. And I'm really proud of you. What's the name of your book? Samara Loves Her Locks. And what is your book about? Loving yourself. Why did you want to write a book about loving yourself? I, I love when people are happy. Okay. That's good. That's good. Well, so, what is your book? What is your book? What do we get from reading your book? What does that teach us? It teaches you to be authentic and loving yourself. To be authentic and loving yourself. What is 
That's a pretty big word for a seven-year-old. What does authentic mean? It means one of a kind. That's right. So you're teaching kids your age to embrace their authenticity and be one of a kind. Good job. Is there, uh, are we going to get another book from you? Are we gonna? Are we gonna? Do you want to write another book? Yes. What do, What would that be about? It's gonna be about not being scared. Not being scared, I'm facing not. your fears. High five! You're pretty. You're pretty. You're pretty amazing. You keep being amazing like that. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say? No. No. Okay. Leilani, would you come here, please? Stay right here. So the part of what we do is must be to prepare the next generation. And like I said, when I got up here, I pray that my life experience um, are, are in place so that I can teach my children so that when they come across certain things, they will be aware of how to maneuver and navigate through them. So we talk about death pretty I, I, I won't say it's a, it's a common conversation, but we, but we have these conversations to prepare them. And then, of course, losing their grandmother um, was a was a pretty big, uh, you know, blow for them. And through this experience, we've all learned together about what it's like to have someone that we love, you know, no longer physically present with us, but still present in other ways. I went through a season where I had to find a way to turn my grief around. And the way that I did that was um, realizing how much my ego was playing a part in the feelings that I was feeling. When my queen would see me being uh, upset, she would say, well, what is it that you're missing right now? What is it that you're feeling right now? And I would say, well, I, I just want to hear her voice. I just want to, I just want to make her laugh. I just and I realized this is all my ego being upset that it can't have what it wants. And that's really what I was dealing with, what I was suffering with, you know? So, I'm gonna ask you guys some questions. Hi, hi, how are you doing today? What's your name? Leilani. Leilani what? Leilani Hippolyte. Okay, good to see. How old are you, Leilani? Five. Okay. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a doctor. Doctor? So you want to help people? Okay. What do you, I didn't ask you that. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want, I want to be a singer. A singer? Okay. I like that. Leilani, what's your job? To protect my sisters. Good answer. What's your job? To protect my sisters. Okay. Well, that was easy. I'm going to ask you a hard one. What do you do if daddy dies? Finish the family mission. Mm, okay. Good job. What's the family mission, Leilani? To free our people. How do we free our people, Leilani? By teach them how to free themselves. Say that one more time. How do we free our people? By teach them how to free themselves. Because if they're not free, what are they? Slaves. And what do slaves have? Masters. What do the masters do? Control the slaves. Mm. What makes someone unfit to be a slave? Knowledge. Knowledge, yeah. Is knowledge powerful? No, the application of knowledge is powerful. What you say? What you that say? Application of knowledge is power. So it's not the knowledge, it's the application of knowledge. That's a big word for a five-year-old. Really now, if you had to explain that to one of your five-year-old acquaintances, That's right. how would you how would you explain what you just said to them? Using what you learn to get what you want. Using what you learn to get you want what you want. That's the application of knowledge. It's powerful that you know that and that you remember that. Because if daddy's not here one day, you know what to do, right? right. And yes. you know what to do, right? Yes. 
So then that means daddy did his job. Absolutely. And that's what this is about. Doing our job, preparing our people. We can't just wait until the check engine light come on or the car stop to realize that there's some maintenance, some, pre some preventative things we could have done to make sure that the legacy moves forward. You got to know your mission and teach your children. If not, you're just existing. I, I, I decided I wanted to be immortal. I want my life to extend so far beyond what happens in this physical dimension. And, 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 and when it's all said and done, I'm pretty sure there'll be monuments erected in my honor. But if that's not the case, what these young women do will be those monuments, will be my legacy. So I wake up each and every day building my legacy that will outlive me. And um, you have anything else that you wanted to say? No, you have anything else that you wanted to say? You can be awesome and be great and be powerful in any way. In any way. Oh, God. I say, I love y'all. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you would like from the hip like tribe? Well, yeah, I want to hear some of this Michael Jackson that talk. Oh, y'all gonna sing? Rock a the only song we know. So y'all want to sing Rock with you? So rock with us. Yeah. A little yeah. bit. <laughs> it's, it's there. It's okay. Well, your next book about facing your fears. And remember, so, uh, we did it last night. Remember? We, and we wasn't did. singing it, though. I know, but it's still like a side. <laughs> but remember what we did? We fear last night. Like, we keep it to the side because. You want to sing to me? We don't need it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you remember what Daddy said? Because this one person. Right. That's right. Right. Okay, it's done. Okay. Sounds good. All right, well, we want to hear it. I'm going to start. I'm going to start back. Okay. Y'all need to you want me to start it? Yes. Okay. Girl, close your eyes. Let the rhythm get into you. Don't try to fight it. There'll be nothing that you can do. Relax your mind. Lay back and groove with mine. You gotta feel the feet. And we gon' ride the boogie And say that people I wanna rock with you All night Since you went to the sunlight I wanna rock with you All night Gonna rock and night the way <laughs> <laughs> Yeah I love my babies, I love my life, and, I'm, and I appreciate this opportunity to, uh, to add value to your life. So everyone be great, be powerful, be the gods and goddesses that you are. Don't let anything in this, uh, in this life stop you from meeting and maximizing your potential. I'll show you. That's that audacity. It's all looking good on me after a while. Yep, this 